Okay, so here's some concrete examples based on the readings. Note that right now we're just going to assume that for recall purposes, the students have just read the text. We haven't done anything else with them. They've done no activities, nothing else. We are just testing whether or not uh, they recall, understand, can apply, whatever things in the text. Now, um, suppose that I have three different types of goals from the Spanish expansion stuff, persons, terms, and events. Um, I'm going to use Cortez Ally and Pizarro Conquers the Incans in 1533 as examples. There would be a lot more and want to tie this to other things we've talked about. Usually if I have these higher learning goals, they will not just be tied to one particular unit or one particular lesson, but they will stretch across, you know, the whole semester. Uh, and I will keep coming back because the higher ideals, when you look at the standards and everything, that's all level two and level three stuff. And every instance of the you know Spanish colonies and the American colonies, this war, that war, this conflict, that conflict, it's all just surface structure, but there are deeper things underneath that we really want our students to get. So if I'm looking at level one, my goals might be at the end of the unit, the students will recall, note the level one term, who Cortez was, and this is the fact that I want them to recall about Cortez. What an ally is, we're taking this right from the text, and Pizarro conquered the Incans in 1533. The assessment items are incredibly easy then. Who conquered the Aztecs? Well, it's Cortez. What term means a friend who will help you in a fight? Ally. What important event happened in 1533? And Pizarro conquered the Incans. Now, suppose that I want, let me bring that down a little bit, uh, a level two goal. Same content, but let's think about, well, what, do, what does it mean to understand or comprehend Cortez? What does it mean to understand or comprehend what an ally is and to comprehend that Pizarro conquered the Incans in 1533? So if I'm thinking about a comprehension type goal, I can't just kind of leave it at what is just in the text. I'm going to have to tap into background knowledge, other sources of information, and so on. And really here, it will be my job to go beyond the text or to make connections about things that aren't obvious within the text. So for Cortez, I might want them to know that he was ambitious. Uh, he was incredibly religious, believed strongly in the use of force and the might makes right, kind of the master morality of strength is a good thing rather than the slave morality of, oh, you know, strength and, and the use of force is a bad thing. Uh, he wanted power, fame, and wealth, and he... Uh, did all this stuff to achieve those goals. Uh, and I might want these different aspects of Cortez to be in their head. I might want them to connect those things. And I want, my, I want it to be also connected in their own heads. Uh, when I say what an ally is, a friend who will help you in a fight, I, I want to embellish this with allies do not need to be your friends. Or I want them to think about who are your friends and what makes a friend your friend. Uh, when we talk about fights, does it just have to be a physical fight? What about a, a you know a Facebook fight? Or what about just a disagreement? Or what about just you uh, trying to achieve something? So I would broaden their understanding of what an ally is into somebody that uh, actively supports you. They may agree with you, but if they don't lend a hand, you can't really call them your ally, can you? Uh, they need to help you achieve your goals and so on. Uh, in a broader human uh, sense, non-things like weather and disease and darkness and time can also be considered allies. Time is on your side and all that sort of stuff. Uh, when I think about what does it mean to comprehend that Pizarro conquered the Incans in 1533, well, I need to know, they need to know why that's important. Well, it brought great wealth, made a, another foothold for more resources and more exchange of goods that ultimately led to Spain being even more powerful. There was also an Incan civil war that made that conquering a lot easier. The diseases made it a lot easier, uh, really easy actually, for them to waltz in and, and kind of take over. So now if I'm going for level two comprehension, I need to use questions that tap into prior knowledge. You know, who was the military leader who defeated the native people of central Mexico? This is a paraphrased version of basically who conquered the uh, uh, Aztecs. 
and I'm substituting, you know, the person who conquered I, I'm to, with military leader. They need to know what these things are. Defeated rather than conquered. Native people of Central Mexico, they need to know that about the Aztecs. And so it, it, I need to tap into these other existing networks in their heads. Whenever I paraphrase, I run the risk that they don't know this or that they don't know this. Or any term that I substitute in my paraphrasing, I start to get on shaky ground. And that's why assessing above level one is always kind of fraught with peril. And you wonder, well, why did they get the question wrong? Was it because they really don't understand or they just didn't understand the way that I was asking the question? Uh, second one, what term means someone who assists you in reaching your goals, right? Uh that would be another paraphrased version. Uh, question three, Pizarro's conquest of the Incans led to many Spanish colonies in central Mexico. Uh, true or false? Uh, this is trying to figure out that, well, the students need to know that the Incans weren't in central Mexico. Uh, this one is a tough one, too, as are true or false that aren't really just completely fact-based. Uh, it did help. Uh, there were a lot of Spanish colonies in central Mexico at the time that Pizarro did conquer the Incans, um, but it did help uh, there be more. If I'm going for application, I need to generate new scenarios that allow them to apply their knowledge. So here I have a situation. Jenny and her brother Billy are arguing over $5 that they found. This should be a period here. Look at that typo. If Cortez saw this, what would he do? Uh, and I have these different options. Uh, to see that they really understand what Cortez is all about. Uh, Billy's having a hard time writing his book report. I put in some people. I want them to figure out who Billy's, al Billy's ally is. And then I have a, a, another form of a, what we will be calling in this class a restricted essay. If the Spanish had not given the name Smallpox and Meagles, would the Incan Empire have been destroyed so fast? Why or why not? And then... This is just an example of what an answer might look like that's testing their ability to apply their knowledge. This one's getting close to analysis, actually, but we'll leave that for a different time. Now, if I go up to level three, I, the, the dependency on background knowledge is bigger than ever. Uh, I run even uh, into greater challenges in trying to make sure I give them a prompt that everyone understands. And so I have to be thinking about what are the deeper structures uh, that do exist that I can even assess whether or not. Now, as far as a person goes, any person, I, I would have to think about them having some kind of personality matrix about what Cortez is and who he was as a person. And, uh, and to break Cortez down into his component parts, like his childhood, his motivations, his desires, uh, his circumstances, his opportunities, and so on. Uh, and that's that's a really complicated thing, way beyond probably what I want, would want to do in a fourth or fifth grade social studies class. An ally, again, I would have to have them look at a, a set of complex behaviors and try to figure out, well, is this person an ally or not? Um, and again, probably way more than I want to do in this case, but this is an idea of what it would take. Uh, example for Pizarro and the Incan Empire, I would have to look at like something about the tactics, thinking about other historic conquests, you know, and I would really say, well, what were the Spanish conquistador and Pizarro's uh, particular strategies, right? And they would have to look at, well, what did they do first, what did they do second, how did they use the Civil War, and how did he gain control and trust of the king, and so on. Uh, to achieve his ends, and they would really have to break it down. So again, analysis is always breaking things down. Uh, when I have discrete events like this, or concepts, or people, not worth it. Same with evaluation, same with synthesis. If I wanted to do evaluation, right, I might first need some kind of, well, I would first need an evaluative criteria, or an evaluative framework that they would use to make their judgments. For Cortez, right, I would have to have something about what a good Spanish soldier is or what, a, what are your framework for evaluating the quality, the importance of historical figures, uh, impact, long-term impact, short-term impact, you know, what they changed, 
how long they lived, what was their influence of power, and all this other stuff. And they would have to know that, and then they could apply it to Cortez. Likewise, similar ideas with allies and the idea of allies. Tough to do with the term, though. Uh, is ally like a sufficient term for describing different relationships? Not really somewhere you would want to go. Uh, finally, Pizarro and the Incan Empire. Again, I might have to try to evaluate how good of a success was it, you know, in terms of uh, number of lives lost, damage that was done, things that were saved, and all this other stuff. That I would have to give them that framework first, and then we could start applying it to different things. Finally, for synthesis, right, they have to combine different things. Uh, they could create a society if they wanted to establish a new society that's supposed to honor both Spanish and native traditions and give respect to both people. Uh, you could do something about setting up that uh, treaty and whether or not or how it would be honored and enforced. Different war strategies that might have been more successful, hypothetical situations are all good for these things. Um, but when we get to analysis, evaluation, and synthesis, as we go through and look at different examples of what this takes, these are usually pretty in-depth uh, projects or questions or answers. And you will use all the basic facts that you went through up here to first build recall and background knowledge, to develop understanding situations you had to apply, I uh, had students apply it to, all uh, to then set the stage for assessing analysis, evaluation, and synthesis. We will go over more goals like this and think about well, what is uh, like a level three goal, and what does it look like, and how many should I have? Typically one a unit and it might not even change across units if you have really high ideals in mind. We'll talk more about this as the semester goes on.